Hey, what's up traders? This is Coldwater from Phantom Trading and welcome to our video on backtesting exercises. So in this video, what we're going to be covering is uh, five backtesting exercises that I came up with, um, you know, I would say probably a year and a half ago for the Phantom community. Um, I'm not sure if anybody requested it, but somebody did request that I go into a little bit more depth on how to actually you know, do them. We don't have a video on it, but you know, within the course, there's like a little written thing that I had. Um, so I figured I'd make a video on it and share it with you guys on YouTube too, because um, you know it's super useful, right? So um, we're gonna cover those five exercises. And and by the way, you know, back testing doesn't you know just mean that you're putting on mock trades and stuff. I mean, you can back test pretty much any component of your strategy, right? And that's what I'm gonna show you guys here. Now this is gonna be more applicable, of course, to Phantom Strategy, but you know I'm just gonna show you guys some very simple um, ways to approach. You know each of the exercises so that you know you get an idea of how to do it and then you can do it within your own trading so with that being said also wanted to mention happy new year to all of you guys uh, who you know watch our videos here on youtube and to those of you that are you know in the phantom trading community um you know appreciate all the support that you guys give uh watching the videos and leaving comments and stuff and you know sharing your experiences uh, both on the technical and trading psychology side of things so it's of course very much appreciated. I hope you guys all had uh, you know, a fantastic holiday. Uh, obviously, we're getting into, uh, you know, we're in mid-January now. Um, it's been kind of a, a slow start to the year, which we expected. But, you know, what I like to do is, uh, and what I have been doing, is just, uh, you know, I'll just observe the market. And if I don't really see anything, I'll just, you know, backtest a little bit, uh, you know, to, to hone my edge, right? Rather than just killing time, try to make it a little bit more productive, right? So um, anyways, that being said, Let's dive into it. Uh, what we have here on the screen, by the way, is uh, a back testing session that we did on Friday or last Friday. Uh, did that with Don Miguel, and uh, you know we do these bi weekly back testing calls within the community. You know, it's a private live Zoom call that we do where you know, we're essentially trading the Phantom strategy and showing you guys how to actually uh, execute it in you know a back testing environment like this. So I think we did pretty good. Um, you know we don't always have amazing results like this, but uh, you know, we're, we're pretty consistent with it. So I figured I'd show you guys. It's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so before we start here, um, I'm going to quickly tell you guys about all the things that we actually, you know, need in order to get started with backtesting and, you know, doing these exercises. So number one, you're going to need obviously some sort of a strategy to trade, right? You don't want to just kind of hop into this blindly. Um, you know, whether you're trading a break and retest strategy or you're trading a supply and demand strategy. I mean, you could even be trading fibs or, or Elliott waves for all I care, right? At the end of the day, any of these strategies can work, right? Some of them have, uh, you know, better performance than others, but of course you need some sort of a strategy. Don't jump into this blindly, right? With no strategy or, or semblance of, uh, you know, a trading plan. You, you need something like that, right? So um, obviously I suggest, you know, learning uh, supply and demand, but you know, that's just because I trade it. So I'm, of course I'm biased, right? Number two, what you're going to need is some sort of backtesting software. So most of you have TradingView. TradingView, of course, has bar replays. So, you know, I mean, if you're already paying for paying for TradingView, there you go. You have backtesting software. You don't really need anything more than that. But of course, if you want to do something that's a little more involved, that has like trade management and stuff like that, of course, you have uh, FX replay as an option, which is what we're using right now. Um, or you can use software FX, which I think has really fantastic, uh, trade management as well. Uh, it's pretty realistic. They have news and all this stuff, right? And then there's also Forex Tester 5, which I think I've used once, but you know, I don't personally use it. Um, but anyways, you'll need some sort of a backtesting software, of course, to uh, that has a bar replay, sorry, a bar replay feature, right? And, uh, you know, the reason for that is because, you know, it doesn't, doesn't really matter uh, which exercise you're doing, you are going to have to kind of, you know, play with bar replay. That's the whole point, right? And then number three, is you know we need some sort of a clear goal in mind right so whether you are you know doing one of the the simple back testing exercises uh, that i'm going to cover or you're doing something um where you actually require you know that you're actually putting uh, mock trades on um you're gonna need uh you need to, you're gonna need to set some sort of a goal right so I, i'll go over the the different goals that i kind of have for each uh mark or sorry for each exercise that we're going to cover in this video but you know if you're doing one where you're actually like placing trades and you know you're just testing your edge or honing your edge 
or your strategy or tweaking your trading plan what i like to do is just aim for you know anywhere from five to ten percent or five to ten r right whatever uh, the, the multiple of your risk is right you could be risking you know half a percent and if you're targeting five r that'd be two two point five percent or if it's ten r it's five percent right um but i like doing that and you know doing five to five to ten r five to ten percent because it's much like you know passing a a challenge or verification account and you know i'm talking about obviously doing that within one month period right so anyways that kind of covers all of the stuff that you need to actually get started um but yeah let's let's hop into the first back testing exercise which is going to be um the market structure exercise okay so for the market structure exercise all we're going to be doing is marking out our market structure and kind of observing observing what happens right um now if you have no idea what market structure is you're completely new to trading i highly suggest you check out our uh, basic market structure and advanced market structure videos that we have on youtube um, they're not hard to find they should be on the front page of the phantom uh, youtube channel so um check that out i kind of cover everything that you need to know i'm not going to go into you know too much depth about how to actually you know mark out structure and all of that but i'm just going to show you guys how i would do it and then we can you know move on you know there are five exercises so it's quite a lot to cover and i don't want to you know bore you guys too much so you know starting with this we'll just go on the daily chart and all you're going to do is mark out your market structure on the time frame of your choice so you can do this on the daily or the four hour or the 50 minute or you can do the you know a combination of the three right uh the same way that you would in the live market and then just kind of bar replay through price but if you're brand new to it i suggest just sticking to the daily or four hour and marking out structure and just getting a sense of you know how to mark it out correctly right so i'm going to show you guys how i would mark this out and all we're going to do is mark out our pivot points because we're on the daily i'm going to mark it as red right so we have a high here we have a low here we have a lower high and we don't have a lower low yet, but I'm gonna mark out our uh, our high and our low here, right? So essentially all we're gonna do is wait for either the high or the low to break. We can see we're in a pretty bearish market here. Um, looks like we're kind of tapping into something, but that's not even really relevant to what we're doing. We're really just observing market structure here, right? But we're pretty much assuming or expecting that this low is weak and that it's gonna get you know uh, taken out. We wanna see a candle closure below that. So I'm gonna play through price now and let's see what happens okay so is this a structure break no because we just swept it so again i'm waiting for a candle closure a nice strong candle closure below it so that's not bad right we, we have a significant uh close below it but i'd like to see it close a little further before we actually count that as a structure break so really i'm just kind of viewing this as a sweep because if we look at the, the relative size of of you know the candle closure here we're looking at what uh 200 or sorry 25 pips basically between you know the low and the actual candle close here versus the size of this right which is 682 pips right so you kind of get the idea so again i'm going to view this as a sweep for now yeah it did close below it, so you could count it as a break but there we go we'll count that as a break instead right um yeah so I'm not going to really mark out the low here because this could continue pushing lower but essentially we've broken this low and now what i can do is mark out my new high and my floating low here so i'm just going to leave this here and until we get a pullback i'm not really going to move it up to that because this could just keep on pushing lower right and that's kind of what's happening here it looks like so we're breaking lower breaking lower right again i'm just going to move this out of the way but you can kind of see how we're forming this bearish leg right and until again we get some sort of a pullback here which i'm going to expect we, we might get it now right okay it looks like we pulled back a decent amount here now i can start counting this as a low and potentially we can view this as a lower high assuming that we break this low right okay so now we broke that low and again what do we have here a lower high excuse me and a lower low so just move this over here and again we don't know how low this is going to go no pun intended but okay now we're starting to pull back again and this would be our new structure range on the daily right and so this is 
pretty much what the exercise comprises of, right? We're, I mean, you can, if you want, you can try and guess if the higher low is going to break and try to, you know, fold in some of the other parts of your strategy. But if you're just learning pure market structure, this is a great backtesting exercise to actually hone that skill because it is a skill to be able to mark this out with consistency, right? So what happened here? Now we broke the high. Again, we now have a floating high. I'll move this over and let's see if we can get, you know, a significant pullback here. Otherwise, this is still all just one leg to me. Okay, we kind of pulled back here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight candles. Uh, looks like we swept something, you know, so I, again, I don't want to get too in depth about it, but I would count this as, as a significant pullback, right? Especially if we, you know, break lower and then break high again, right? Okay, so look, so now we pulled back deeper. And here's the thing, this could hold though. We, I mean, we could continue to break the low, in which case this is not a... a you know, higher low, right? Because we're only going to confirm this is a higher low if this breaks, right? After this pulls back. Otherwise, we're just going to leave the high where it is. If we break this low, then that high remains the same. We're not trailing it or anything, right? Okay, we're still stuck within the range. As you can see, there is our structure range. And again, until we break the higher low, we're just kind of sitting in between this, right? This is a pretty rangy market. Okay, now we've broken below and we've closed well below the previous low. So, what did I say before? We're not going to trail our lower high to this. We're going to leave it here, right? Because we're shifting from bullish to bearish, right? Right. We had a bullish structure lag, and then now we shifted bearish. Because what's what's the whole idea of this? Well, price could come back to this extreme here, right? And we don't want to be caught thinking, okay, this is a structure break, when in reality, this is the extreme level here, right? So I'm getting a little into the supply and demand side of things, but you know, just to give you some context as to you know why I'm marking it out that way. Anyways, that's how I would mark out uh, my market structure. Here's our new structure range, by the way. And uh, yeah, that's the first sort of exercise. And again, what you can do is if you want to collect data on something like, you know, how often a, a trend sustains itself, right? A trend being at least uh, two structure breaks in one direction, right? Um, in this case, we have not defined a trend yet, but you know, something like this, right? Where we have a low break and then a low break again, right? That would be considered a, a you know, a trend continuing itself, right? You can actually try and, you know, mark out, um, or not mark out, but record uh, the number of occurrences uh, that that happens, right? Where we continue the trend versus how often we, um, you know, move in the opposite direction like we did here, right? And actually one of our members, uh, Kyle, in the Phantom Trading Community actually did this and he, he shared the data with me. He did it for quite a few pairs, it was really interesting. Um, but yeah. For the most part, it seemed like, you know, obviously trend will continue itself um, a little more often than, you know, it actually switches like this. So just to give you an idea. But yeah, again, a great way to collect data just to uh, to really understand the probabilities of, you know, how market structure is going to play out, right? Anyways, let's move on to the next exercise, which is going to pertain, again, more to the phantom trading strategy. We're talking about supply and demand and... Uh, yeah, we're going to go over that next. So, Okay, so for this next one, uh, we are going to be going through the liquidity exercise, meaning that we're going to be marking out liquidity, you know, on the given time frame that we're trading. So I'm just going to stick to the daily for this again, just for the sake of simplicity, since we already have it marked out. Um, and what you can do is either you can, you know, continue to mark out structure as we were doing previously, um, or you can just focus 100% on liquidity. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to leave the old market structure drawings up here. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this into a solid line. And we are just going to mark out liquidity in all of its forms and all of its shapes and sizes and all of that. So I have my little liquidity uh, line here. And again, same with, uh, you know, the market structure videos and stuff. We also have a video that covers the different types of liquidity and you know how that kind of works within the market so again i'm not going to go into like you know too much detail about what liquidity is again you can watch the other youtube video that we have on the channel i believe it's called uh you know what is forex liquidity or something like that or what is market liquidity but uh yeah let's mark out where the liquidity is sitting on this chart so there's two ways that we can mark it out either we have you know our liquidity to target or we have liquidity that is used as uh, inducement or to trick people, right? And we also have, you know, 
internal and external range liquidity. So let's mark that out. I'm going to start with this, right? We have liquidity obviously sitting above this. And we also have uh, trend line liquidity, which I forgot to mention too. So you know, if you're trading kind of retail strategies, you might just view this as trend lines, which you know is fine. That's correct. But then you also have to think there's stacks of liquidity sitting above this too, right? In the form of, uh, of stop orders and stop loss orders as well, right? People who are shorting here and stuff. So I'm going to play through it. And again, you could combine this with the market structure um, exercise that I was talking about previously, but it's totally up to you. So here, I'll just move this over. We'll float this low until we get a pullback. And again, I just want to sort of focus on liquidity for this one. So, so we've now formed a new low here. And again, is there going to be liquidity sitting here? Yeah, absolutely there is, right? And let's just kind of observe what's happening here. Okay. So now we have a little bit of liquidity that's built up here. And let's just see kind of what happens, right? Like, are we going to sweep that high and then push lower and target this? Or, you know, what's going to happen next? And I can even go as far as marking out these small, you know, buildups of liquidity here. In this case, we technically took the liquidity that was sitting here. So I'll actually just move that out of the way. Remember, you don't want to draw liquidity like this, right? Sort of facing outward because think about it. When price intersects with the liquidity that was sitting here, it's wiping it out. So really, it's kind of a dead zone, right? There are no orders really sitting there unless they're, you know, sitting you know, this way, right? So I only want to draw liquidity like this or like this, right? Not the other way around. It's really important. Just a basic understanding of you know how to read a, a price chart right okay so look we're continuing to break these highs right kind of targeting them right so i'll just leave that there and then look we're building liquidity to the downside here again i'm just going to play through it and we're going to observe what happens okay we're we've actually ended up targeting this meaning we're probably going to take this out and continue to run or you know we've taken this out maybe we'll sweep and then we'll see some sort of a pullback but let's see what happens next Okay, there's a pullback there, right? We don't know how far that pullback will sustain itself. Okay, it looks like we're kind of ranging now. Okay, pulled back a little bit further. So again, I'm just gonna kind of mark it out. You can mark this out in hindsight, right? Or as it develops, we can see we've kind of swept this low out. We pulled back deeper, right? And then look, now we have sort of relative equal highs here. And then same thing. I'm just trying to get an idea. Oops, forgot to mark out this one. I'm trying to get an idea of where liquidity is sitting and how price is interacting with it, right? Are we gonna sweep it out or are we gonna blow through it, right? Okay, so there you go, we kind of targeted that, right? And here's the thing, right? This, these uh, pools of liquidity that I've marked out here, it's good for um, anticipating pullbacks and stuff in a bearish market. And, you know, in some cases, a pool of liquidity or a low, a weak low, a targeted or, or a pool of liquidity that's targeted, right? Liquidity to target, a lot of the time, uh, turns into a structure break, right? Or a substructure break in this case. Um, if I had to mark out structure, by the way, it looked a little something like this. So they're kind of one in the same in a way. So you have to be a little bit fluid about how you approach it. But we can see that we broke this low, we pulled back, we were in the structure range. We didn't really close below that much here until around this area, right? At which point, again, I would view this as a new structure break, right? We're just marking out our daily swing structure. And again, this would be my like lower high, right? Well, for this one anyways, we also have this one that I'll mark out too, right? So I'll just, to give you guys context again, right? We're kind of like this, 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 this. So you can kind of see we're just simplifying into a line chart essentially to get an idea of the market structure. But of course, with it being candlesticks, it is a little harder to read than that. And that's why we practice these skills, right? So that's how I would mark out uh, liquidity again, I'm just trying to observe where it's probably pooling and, and what's going to happen next, right? So even here, we have liquidity built up here at this uh, supply level, right? And let's see, now we're taking that out. Maybe we're going to respect this supply level here, or we're going to sweep it and push lower, or we're going to take it out altogether, right? Because again, where else do we have liquidity sitting? Well, we have trendline liquidity here, and then we have liquidity at all these highs too. So let's see. Okay, we respected the supply level, and we shot down. Right. So in this case, this is liquidity that was used as inducement. Right. Because, again, presumably people were trying to short off of here. They got swept out. Price then 
took them out, tapped into this level of supply. Again, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but th that is what the next uh, exercise is gonna be about. We're gonna talk about supply and demand zones. But yeah, anyways, we see that price kind of tapped in that. And, and let's see now what, what's happening here. We're kind of losing steam and momentum. But again, I'm just gonna mark out the highs and lows and we're just gonna observe what's happening, right? Okay, it looks like we pushed higher, right? Now we're sweeping this high. Now, are we gonna see price? I mean, is this some sort of a bull trap? I don't know. Or is this just liquidity to target and we're gonna to continue to push higher? We have a lot, a lot of liquidity that's sitting above here, right? Looks like demand's in control now. So there we go. Probably gonna take the highs out. There you go, right? So see, you can kind of, in a, in a sense, you know, I, I like to use liquidity a lot for determining like my market direction and stuff. I think it's great for that. Um, but you know, when you start com to combine that with market structure and stuff, you can start to get very accurate with how you're, uh, you know, able to read the market and accurate in your ability to uh, predict, you know, moves in the short term, right? So let's move on to the next exercise here. Okay, so for the next exercise, we're going to talk about supply and demand zones. So again, another really fun exercise for just, you know, practicing number one, how you mark out zones in the first place. And then number two, you know, this is where we can actually start to, uh, um, you know, test ourselves a little bit if we want to, right? Um, again, it's up to you if you want to, you know, maybe log this in a spreadsheet or on a notebook off to the side, marking how accurate you are. Like maybe you only want to mark out zones that you think are going to produce some sort of reaction. In my case, I usually look for zones that break some sort of substructure because in that case, I can say I was at least break even if I had taken a trade off of it. Again, does it matter what time frame you do it on? I say start with the higher time frames, right? Just practice uh, being able to pick out zones that actually produce reactions, right? So again, do you want to combine it with the previous exercises where you're looking at market structure and liquidity? Maybe because it'll give you a sense of what the market direction is, right? It's kind of something that you need to do in a way, or you can just mark out the zones. If you're just, you know, if you're brand new to supply and demand, you can even, you know, do it in hindsight, right? Where you're marking out stuff like this. Right? We have a uh, demand chain here, right? And I'll go as far as marking out this low here too. You can see that this was a chain that kind of formed here, right? And then what I can do is, you know, if you wanna just completely uh, leave your ego out of it, just mark out zones and see what happens, right? Just observe it rather than, you know, trying to uh, pick a zone and you'll know, get frustrated when it does or doesn't work, right? So. Again, you could combine it with marking out things like liquidity, like I said, but again, for the sake of it, I'm just going to show you guys purely how to mark out supply and demand zones and kind of how I'd approach it. So again, I'm not even going to try to mark out zones that uh, that hold or, or not, right? But I'm just going to mark out zones and practice marking them out in a way that makes sense, right? Again, the way that I personally like marking out zones is I like being very uh, liberal about what I mark as a zone. So again, if I set an alert here in the live market, it gets pinged. I'm aware of it. I know that I'm in it and that price is, you know, maybe reacting to it. So let's continue to push through here. Looks like we're actually kind of getting close to uh, current price action. I just realized we pretty much pretty much went through a whole year here, I think. I thought we started in February. Anyways, uh, what I'll do is I'm actually gonna hop to the four hour so that we can kind of, um, you know, not run through time so quickly here. So again, what am, what am I gonna do? I'm just gonna mark out these zones. We can see that we had a little supply chain in this case, right? So again, now we're on the four hour, so a little bit of a smaller time frame compared to the daily, right? We had a supply chain, right? It broke a substructure low. What I'll do is I'll just modify this so we can at least mark that out. And again, if you wanna you know, take a, a, a notepad or a little Excel spreadsheet on the side and just mark your accuracy, right? Whether or not it you know, price reacts to a zone, and then actually, you know, breaks a substructure level, you can do that too, right? So let's see, let's let's say for, for uh, as an example, we'll use this uh, this demand zone, right? You can see that it, it tapped off of the supply zone and then violated that supply zone and the chain. And let's see if this holds or not, right? Okay, it did, and it ended up breaking this high too, right? So again, presumably if you had taken, you know, even an order, just, you know, for the sake of uh, explaining it, right? I'm not saying you should, you know, put a mock order here or, or anything like that. But look, just based on that, you you peaked out at like what 2.44 R, 
and we're talking about the four hour chart, right? So, I mean, if you're a swing trader, this is not a bad trade to take, right? I know it's not a lot of R, but you know, if we at least would have been break even on that, right? So I would count this as a valid level of demand, right? Okay, now let's do it with this one. And again, I'm not going too much into, I'm not going into too much depth about, you know, whether or not it would pick this zone, but let's pretend that we pick this zone next. Let's see if price even taps into it. Okay, so it's tapping into it and let's see what happens next. So this one failed, right? So I would then count this if I was marking this out on an Excel spreadsheet as a failed level that I had picked out, right? If I thought that's, that this was gonna hold, right? You could still mark it out and just, you know, be honest with yourself. Do you think it's gonna hold or not? Maybe change the color if you think it's just a weak zone that's uh, there to produce, you know, a catalyst as a pullback or something, right? Like this, right? So let's say we mark out this zone and same thing. We expect it's gonna hold or maybe we expect this zone is gonna hold. And let's see what happens. Play through, okay? And again, this wouldn't, I would count as a valid zone. Why? Because look, we broke a substructure high in this case, right? Obviously, you know, you would flip that around if we're looking at, you know, a bearish market scenario. Why would I count this as a valid supply level? Well, because it broke a substructure low, right? So it's really that simple, right? Marking out our supply and demand zones. And again, if you want to combine this with, you know, you want to stack it, right? Right. That's kind of, uh, you know, why I ordered or I put all these exercises in a certain order. You could stack your market structure, right? Marking all of that out plus mark out your liquidity and then mark out your supply and demand zones and then try to determine how accurate you are ac accurate you are with marking out those supply and demand zones by marking it on a notepad or an excel spreadsheet on, on you know your other screen or on the side right so that kind of covers the uh, supply and demand um, zone exercise and next we're going to look at uh, market direction which is a little i mean similar but it's a little different All right, guys, for this next one, like I said, we're gonna do market direction. And for this exercise, we're just you know solely gonna focus on determining the direction of the market, right? Now again, if you wanna stack it with the previous exercises, like I mentioned uh, multiple times before, you can do that. And again, you're probably gonna to need to do that um, in some shape, way, or form in order to determine the market direction. Um, but yeah. Let me show you, you know, kind of how I would approach this. So I'm going to do it in a way that kind of combines the previous ones, but I'm not going to go into so much depth that I'm marking out, you know, everything just because I think it's a little unnecessary, but okay, we're on the four hour and maybe what we want to do is just mark out to start our, our structure. So this would probably be my, my structure here. We'll just mark that as a dash line, right? Um, and I can go as far as marking out my uh, my zones too. Just quickly change the color of this to gray, right? Okay, so we have a high, a low, right? We obviously didn't break this low. We didn't break it here either. We swept, but then we broke above here, right? And so we have high, low, higher high, right? Well, this technically would be a higher low, but anyways, so we're bullish there. And then, you know, again, I, I've marked out kind of our what I would consider a swing structure break here. And I can also mark out these internal structure breaks too, right? We can see that we're violating supply, pushing higher, right? And so far we're pretty bullish, right? I could also flip to the daily and kind of look at that. You could even go into split screen mode, right? Um, what else am I gonna mark out? I'm gonna mark out this daily demand zone. We really should have done this first, by the way. So we're in, or sorry, uh, supply zone. We're in a daily supply zone, right? Four hours bullish. Overall, I would say that daily is also bullish right just based on this i'm not gonna mark it out but you can see that we've broken you know multiple highs here pushed up and then we also have liquidity probably sitting above here in a big pool above this major uh daily swing high this previous daily swing high so i'll mark this just as a line with our little arrow on it so i don't have any templates set up so bear with me I'm just kind of manually doing it <coughs> but there there we go there's our four hour Right, and now we can maybe go to the 15 minute and just kind of observe, right? Same thing. There's that substructure break that I had marked out on the four hour, which is now gonna mark out our 15 minute swing structure, which is gonna look a little something like this. I will mark it blue, right? And and you know this may not be like 100% accurate, but I'm just doing it for the sake of the video, right? Look a little something like that, right? 
I think previously here, if I had to mark it out, it kind of look like that, in which case we broke above. And so you'd probably count this as a low as well. So a little something like this, right? And then we broke lower, right? And then we broke higher again, in which case we started, I mean, we shifted back to bullish price action. Then we we've actually established a trend here as we broke to the upside twice, right? Just marking out the 15 minute. So there we go. That's kind of our, our structure and and everything on the uh, on the daily and four hour and 15 minute. In terms of four hour zones, uh, I mean, we can we can mark out the uh, internal four hour zone that we have here, supply zone, and we can just kind of observe. Let's see, like, yeah, okay. So we haven't really violated it. I'm just gonna move this off to the side. You can kind of see that we're kind of pretend we're intersecting with it because we are, right? And then last thing is, I'm just gonna mark out you know, where I see pools of liquidity kind of forming. So I have this low, I have this low, I have this high, which is starting to form. Doesn't mean that there's a ton of liquidity there, but it's probably a little bit. And then uh, what I like to do is <coughs> for determining market direction, again, either you can do this on just one time frame, or, uh, you know, you can do it on multiple kind of like I'm doing here. But whatever your, um, you know, your execution time frame is, I, I mean, I probably wouldn't go on the one minute to try to mark, uh, define market direction. I probably go as low as like the 15 or five minute. But uh, we're just going to stick to the 15 minute for this. So I'm going to play through it. And whoops, I didn't mean to put it on the four hour. But anyways, from here, we can kind of see, right, that we've now broken this low, we've shifted back down to bearish um, 15 minute structure, swing structure. And then from here, just kind of want to observe and try to either pick zones that we think are going to hold, right, or just to observe pure price action, right. So maybe we expect, let me just push this over to a session that actually has volume in it, because we're in like Asia session right now. So here's Frankfurt open. <coughs> maybe I expect that this low, which has probably a little bit of liquidity here, and we kind of already swept this out. Maybe I expect that this low is going to, you know, get pushed, maybe we're even going to sweep this low, and then we're going to see, you know, price action do something like this, right? So I'll just kind of draw what I think is going to maybe happen. I don't know for sure if this is going to happen, but maybe we'll see a pullback. Maybe we're tapping into this zone here. So if I'm accurate about this, again, same thing, I take my notepad or Excel spreadsheet that I have on the side, and just mark out whether or not I was accurate about it, right? So let's see. And I kind of just want to call the move of the day, right? So it looks like it was accurate. But in this case, it didn't actually tap into the zone. So I would just not mark that on my Excel spreadsheet, right? I'm trying to count my accuracy. And really for, for counting accuracy for any one of these, whether you're doing, you know, your supplier demand zone, or just market direction, like I'm showing you guys here. It's just a matter of, you know, it's the same as as, as uh, calculating your strike rate, you just take, you know, the number of times you're accurate, and divide that by the total number of, you know, guesses uh, that you had, right? So in this case, again, what do we see, we have a bunch of liquidity kind of being built up here. We have a demand zone, or sorry, demand chain that is starting to form, right? And <coughs> you can see that we're respecting a supply zone here. So what do I expect is going to happen now? I think that price is going to push lower, and then maybe retrace up. Let's see. Okay, so we push below that. And I could be wrong, like maybe this will continue down. Right? Because now we're in like, it looks like we're probably going to range because we're coming up to spread hours now. Okay, I ended up pushing lower, we ended up sweeping this high. So I would count that as you know, me being wrong about that. Looks like I was just a little bit late. And there you go. Now it's starting to push up, right? So again, same thing. Now we're at what is it? Like nine or 845 Eastern. It's the same thing. I'm just gonna kind of mark this out, we swept this low, we pushed up, right. And again, you don't have to necessarily mark this out to try and like track your accuracy, right? It doesn't hurt to just observe the market and mark it up and get a sense of how price uh, reacts to certain levels, whether it's supplier demand zones or liquidity, right? Okay, so you kind of see we're just messing around here a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I kind of expect that this low is probably going to go um, but I'm thinking maybe we're going to come and sweep and tap into this first. So let's see if I'm right about that one. Okay, that's holding first, right? Looks like we're getting late into the day. This is maybe not the best market conditions because this is December, right? But that actually held, 
right? So, so here's the thing, right? If you had said, okay, I thought this demand level was gonna hold, and then it broke some sort of substructure level, which by the way, it didn't yet. Let's see if it does, right? And I would consider that valid, right? So that one, that that one's valid if you mar if you you know considered that a zone that you thought was going to hold, right? And then there are going to be certain instances where maybe there is no zone or a zone kind of like you know coincides with a high or something that you're expecting is going to get swept as liquidity, like this. Like maybe I expect this high is going to hold now, right? What is this? Nine thirty Eastern. Okay, it doesn't hold. Right, so I would count that as you know me being in inaccurate about it, right? And again, what was my original idea? Well, it was that this would hold, and same thing. It doesn't look like it's going to hold either, but you kind of get the idea, right? So it's just to give you a sense of you know market direction based on both liquidity, supply and demand zones, and of course your market structure as well, right? So you kind of want to keep on updating that if you want to stay on top of it. Let's do a couple more and just see. Right? Maybe you think this supply level is going to hold or this supply level, in which case, you know, this is almost like back testing in the sense that you could place orders on here, right? So maybe you think one of these two are going to hold, so you'd feel comfortable placing orders on both. And again, we just want to see some sort of substructure break. And if it, you know, runs further, even better, right? So in this case, look, we were correct about this one. So I would, you know, mark that as correct. Why? Because look, this low broke. And look, it happened to run quite a bit. And I think this is news. Looks like it happened at 830. So, you know, regardless, right? I mean, you can call the direction of news too. That's kind of the point of this. So that is the market direction exercise. And again, you kind of have some skin in the game if you're going to mark out your accuracy on it, which is, I think, good. But, you know, without the complication of adding stop losses and entries and targets quite yet, right? It just keeps it simple. So let's move on to the final backtesting exercise, which I think most of you are familiar with. Um, and that is just standard bar replay, right? So there's a few ways that you can approach it. Um, in the case of, you know, FX replay, you cannot rewind. So this is what I would consider hardcore backtesting, but it's taking pretty much everything that we've talked about previously, you know, whether you want to mark this stuff up or not, and then essentially just looking for uh, trades and, you know, placing orders on them, right? So let's see if we can do that. I'll try to catch a trade here. Uh, if we take an L, we take an L, like really doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, let's play through to maybe London session here. So, okay, I can see that we have liquidity kind of built up here. We have liquidity built up in this level. And I'm just going to mark out some zones here. So we have this high, this low. Excuse me. And then we have these, you know, internal highs and lows as well. We can see that we're forming a bit of a demand chain. So maybe demand is actually in control here a little bit. This is a little messy, but you kind of get the point that I'm I'm getting at here, right? Well, let's see. Play it forward. So we could have entered here, you know. I didn't quite catch it, but see with this we would have been break even, right? As it broke this high here, and that actually would have been a really nice trade. I probably should have taken that, but anyways, that would be you know an example of that, right? Now in the case of FX replay, it's a matter of like throwing an order on, right? So in this case, let's wait a little bit. Okay, we're taking this high out. Looks like we're maybe gonna tap into this. Okay, now we're in, starting to get into New York session. Sort of violated this. It's probably gonna take this high out. And again, you don't wanna just, you know, back test on one time frame either. It's really important that you flip through. In this case, we're very rangy on the four hour, right? You wanna flip through the different time frames, right? We can see that we were in that supply level on the daily on the four hour same thing we're in a supply level again i know it's messy but you know bear with me we're also within a demand chain here so again very rangy price action not the the most ideal conditions but maybe we can expect that price is going to uh, do something we like so what i'm going to do here is i'm just going to throw an order on here and we'll just move it like that i'll just show you how i would you know actually place an order right um, actually, maybe let's not enter this yet. Let's let it develop a little bit. Ooh, okay, would have been good. You guys saw that I called it. I just didn't place the order. <laughs> so basically, what I would have done, right, is hit place order, do whatever you know percent risk that you want to do. It could be 0.5 or one. Hit save, and there you go. That's how you would enter it on, you know, um, FX replay. Just so you guys get an idea. So delete that. Let's see if we can catch maybe one other one. 
but you can kind of see how I'm like, in a way, I'm kind of folding in all the other concepts. I'm not necessarily like, you know, tracking my accuracy or, you know, the probability of a higher low breaking based on structure. In fact, you can see I kind of stopped marking out structure here because we're, we're in a very rangy market. So I'm really just, you know, playing the price action that's in front of me, but kind of just play through there. And again, I'm just kind of observing what you can also do is turn on these sessions, right? It's really important. You know, whether it's in, in FX replay or software FX, I'm always paying attention to what session I'm in, right? I don't really trade Asia session. I don't trade London in, in the live market, so I don't trade it when I backtest either. But, you know, it doesn't mean we can't come and observe, you know, whether a supply level is going to hold or not, right? Like it did here, right? So again, that would be another valid supply level. It held, right? And maybe there is a nice, uh, sorry, a nice five minute uh, entry in this area, right? Or a one minute entry uh, in London session. Like we really don't know, right? So let's see. Took this low out, we have this demand level, right? Let's just kind of wait. Oh, okay. Looks like we had news again. So 8.30, right? So our demand held there, right? We didn't really tap into a demand zone. We swept these lows and then popped off, right? So again, same thing. I'm gonna just wait a little bit, wait till London session. Okay, there's New York. We have equal highs here. And I'm thinking that this is probably going to be respected, but let's let's just see what happens here. What I'll do is I'll just throw an order in around this area, and what I want to do is cover the low too, kind of give this some room. The price play through for a second here. Don't think it's going to come back though, unfortunately. Oh, it would have tapped us in. I keep doing that. Anyways, don't do what I'm doing, you know, obviously place the orders. I was hoping that I could kind of observe price as it comes closer to it. But yeah, it looks like it would have been another uh, really solid trade there, five R or so. Let's see if it breaks this high again. Right, so again, you can just kind of observe what price is doing. So in this case, okay, it didn't break higher. Asia session kind of didn't do much and then London we pop below. So, you know, I probably would have TP'd this at around this high anyways for four R, it's not a bad trade. We just got tapped into it, right? But just go play forward. And again, like, here's the thing, right? You don't want to be backtesting in a way that frustrates you either. So, you know, my suggestion to a lot of you that are new out there is you can kind of do what I'm doing is just put on mock trades, but maybe don't even, you know, place the actual order. Because I get it. It can be pretty frustrating, especially when you have a strategy or, or an edge that's very undeveloped and, you know, you just eating loss after loss can be very demoralizing. So again, that's why I kind of said to stack all of these trading exercises on top of each other, because again, if you practice that way, then you don't have so much skin in the game at the start. You're really just more in, a, in an observation mode versus, you know, if you try to hop into hardcore backtesting with no replay right away, uh, expect to get frustrated. I remember when I started backtesting, it was an extremely frustrating experience for me. Like it would actually make me, you know, really like pissed off, I'm not gonna lie. Um, that's just how I am, right? That's how I reacted to it. That may not be the case for you, but listen, trading is unforgiving. So, you know, try to make learning an enjoyable experience for you so that you actually stick to it rather than getting frustrated and quitting, right? You don't want to make it so outside of the realm of, you know, what you're capable of that, you know, you quit early on, right? And it's just kind of a waste of time, right? But anyways, that kind of concludes it. Um, I just pretty much covered every backtesting exercise that I do. Um, what do I do personally at my stage? You know, if you're a more advanced trader, um, I like to do uh, kind of a mix of things. I'll do, um, obviously I do like end of day markups. I don't always do it by the way, but I'll do my end of day markup sometimes. At the very minimum, I'm doing it on the actual, you know, trading view chart at the end of the, the trading session, just to see, you know, if I missed anything, if I didn't take any trades that day. Of course, if I took a trade, whether it worked out or not, I'm always gonna journal it. That's super important. Right. But in terms of back testing, um, I will do a mix of hardcore bar replay with no rewinding, much like I just showed you guys here because you can't rewind in FX replay. And sometimes what I'll do is in software FX, I'll do sort of a hybrid where I'll kind of play through price and I'll have the rewind function on just in case I make you know a small error or something like holding through spread hours um, or holding through, you know, Friday to Sunday or Monday. Right. Because that's not something that I do. Right um, now, of course, you can avoid a lot of those small errors by just going slower when you're playing through price. And, and, you know, again, that's another thing I want to mention is take your time as you backtest, right? Don't 
blow through price at the speed of light. Like you're not going to learn anything that way. Take your time, absorb the information that you're, you know, putting in front of you. You know, it is very information dense looking at a, a chart and trying to observe, you know, chart patterns and liquidity and market structure, supply and demand zones. It's a lot to take in, right? So that's my suggestion for that. Um, but yeah, I hope this, you know, helps you guys a little bit with your back testing. And again, what's the the whole point of all this at the end of the day is, you know, it's to hone our edge so that you can actually make you know, money in the market in a consistent manner, right? So of course, if you guys are interested in learning, you know, more about the phantom trading supply and demand strategy, I urge you to obviously to check out some of the other free videos that we have on YouTube. But if you're serious about becoming a professional trader, I would check out the phantom trading course. Uh, I think at this point, we've taught, you know, something like 10,000 traders. Um, so, you know, we have a pretty big community. We do a lot of live stream um, sessions, uh, both in session within the trading session, as well as uh, the back testing sessions that I was mentioning bi-weekly, where we do, you know, just this, where we're playing through FX replay and, you know, practicing together, right? So anyways, that being said, I hope you guys have a good rest of your January and hope this helped you in your backtesting endeavors. Take it easy, everyone.